React fragments were introduced in React 16.2.0 and even though they've been around quite a while now, many React developers I've talked with haven't started to use them yet. And the number one reason for this usually is that they have heard of them but never really got around to learn about them. In this video we'll go through what React fragments are, how you can use them and why should you use them. A common pattern in React is for a component to return multiple elements. Usually these elements are wrapped for example inside of the div. In most cases the wrapper div is irrelevant and is only added because React components require you to return only one element. This kind of behavior results in useless markup and sometimes invalid HTML, which is bad. For example, we could have a component called table that renders an HTML table and inside that table the columns are rendered with another component called columns. This would result in an invalid HTML to be rendered because the wrapper div inside of the columns component would be rendered inside of the tr element. So how should we handle this kind of situation? Well, you guessed right, we should use fragments. React fragments let you group a list of children without adding any extra nodes to the DOM because fragments are not rendered to the DOM. So basically we'll use React fragments wherever we would normally use a wrapper div. We can use React fragments with the react.fragment syntax so we could write our columns component as follows. Inside the render method, instead of wrapping our td elements inside of a div, we can place them inside of a react.fragment element. And now the table component would render the following HTML. Fragments can also be declared with a short syntax, which looks like an empty tag. So if we would use the short syntax inside of our columns component, it would look like this. Okay, so now we know what React fragments are, but where would we actually use them? Well, the most common use case for fragments is probably when you need to return multiple elements. With fragments this is easy and you don't need your typical wrapper div in order to do that. This is exactly what we did in the last example. If we take a look at another example, here we have an application component which will render a header, content and footer components. Instead of wrapping these components inside of a wrapper div, we will rather place them inside of a fragment. Another great way to use fragments is when we are conditionally rendering elements. They make it very easy to render groups of elements without adding any extra markup. So, for example, if we had a login form component where we wanted to render the content depending on if the user is logged in or not. So, for example, if we want to render a header and a paragraph, if the user is logged in, we could place these elements inside of a fragment. And then if the user is not logged in, we could display a login form with a bunch of different fields. We could place these fields also inside of a fragment. And this way group our elements inside of a fragment instead of, for example, a wrapper div. Fragments can also help us when we are rendering arrays, because fragments can have key props. So in our example we have a user list component that has an array of the user objects, and inside the render method we will map through the users and render the user name, email and phone number. And in this case we can wrap this name, email and phone number inside of a React fragment and give the key prop for the fragment itself. This way we don't need to use a div for wrapping the user info in. So are fragments worth using instead of say a wrapper div? Well, I would say they are, and actually Dan Abramov also answered this question in Stack Overflow, saying that they are worth using since they are a tiny bit faster and thus has less memory usage. Also some CSS mechanisms like Flexbox doesn't work if you add divs inside of the layout, and also the DOM inspector is less cluttered when you are using fragments. So the fact that fragments eliminate the wrapper div, which can cause problems with invalid HTML and styling issues with components, plus the fact that they use less memory and make the DOM inspector less cluttered, I'd say they are worth using. But yeah, that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed this video and hopefully you also got something out of it and learned something new. And as always, if you liked the video, please hit that like button and if you are not already, 
be sure to subscribe. See you in the next video.